guys, it's Tom from RuckyGarden.com and today we're going to be building a top bar beehive. Now a top bar beehive is supposed to be a, a, a natural way of housing bees and supposed to um, just produce a more calm bee. Anyway, what I'll do now is, it's actually starting to rain at the moment, so I'll just quickly go through the parts that you need and, and basically what I've done, the plans I've gotten off the net, I'll leave a link below to where I got the um, the plans for this and I'll go through some of the little differences I've made just to go from inches which they use to centimetres or millimetres metric which is what I'm using. Alright so this here is all the parts that I've got laid out. Um, basically what I've got here is the sides which are um, 1100 millimetres by 300 millimetres. And then we've got the ends, which are 450 by 30 millimetres. Here are the followers. This is where I've made the biggest change in terms of changing inches to centimetres. Um, no need to write all these down because I will put a list of what I've used in the information bar down below, so you'll be able to see that. The, um, the top bars are 34 millimetres wide. Now that's pretty important that you get the right one because it's based on the way bees make honeycomb um, it can be plus or minus a millimetre and actually talk about if you're getting wild bees that haven't grown up in a commercial beehive um, can possibly use 32 mil um, bits of wood and these are basically the, the bars that the, cone, the honeycomb are going to hang off okay and one of these bars will go on top of the follower board and that basically um, determines the size of the hive at the time and you can them along anyway more explanation of that later on <clears throat> okay on this is six mil half dowel so it's basically a semicircle bit of dowel um, they they um, are going to be comb guides along the top bar and that'll be a bit more obvious how they're going to work later on um, I've got some treated pine here for the legs they're 800 millimeters long okay I've got some mesh here for the bottom I'm also intending to put in a, a um, inspection window, so this is just some clear perspex that, um, that I'm going to make the window with. I'll show you how I do that. Um, got some bits for the wood. I've just used it. You wouldn't have to use, this is 25mm ply. Um, you wouldn't have to use anything that thick for the roof. Okay, but it was just what I had, like what I had left over from the ply that I bought to make the, the body of the hive. So going to use that anyway yeah, it'll be a bit heavier but that's all right okay and this is just the roof frame here so they're the two long bits for the roof frame and so there's 75 millimeters and this is 150 millimeters for the sides now I'm going to these will have to be trimmed to when I know exactly how much how long they have to be this will have to be cut in half to the actual length and when they are they're going to be cut in half with um, they'll be 75 mil up, and then they'll be cut in an angle to to um, form a gable that the roof is going to sit on. And this bit of this is three mil ply. That's just going to sit um, in the roof section, just on top of the where the top bars will be. Just uh, as a bit of protection. I'll see if it's if it's needed or not. Um, I'm actually not sure if it's going to stop ventilation that the bees will require. So. We'll see how that goes. I'll, I'll put that in, but if I need to remove it, I may remove it later on. And um, we'll see. Anyway, other things that you'll need. Um, just screws to be able to screw things together um, with the inspection window because the bit of wood that I cut out of the side to make the window, I'm going to be putting that in with hinges so that you can close off the light so that you're not um, disturbing the bees all the time. And to attach the legs, you'll need bolts and you'll need washers with those bolts as well so they don't pull through the wood. Always when you're bolting into wood, even when you're bolting, when you're bolting into anything, it's not a bad practice to use washers. Okay, so that's basically the parts that we need. The tools that you'll need, basically what I've used so far, like I've already pre-cut these things, I don't think I need to show you how to cut bits of wood. Um, if I do need to show you, then I've don't know how you're going to cope building a bee of. I don't mean to be like cruel or anything about that, but um, yeah, if you're going to try and build anything, you probably should know how to cut wood. But anyway, things you're going to need: obvious things, a tape measure, um, a like a right angle square to 
to make sure everything's at right angles. Um, pencil, those sorts of things, a circular saw. If you've got a compound saw or a drop saw of some sort, that'll also help as well to be able to cut things. Um, clamps, uh, obviously a workbench. Um, a, what else are we going to use? A power drill or a cordless drill to be putting screws and stuff in. Um, and also a drill, like with drill bits, to be able to drill holes into wood as well. Particularly when you're putting the legs on, you're going to have to drill holes. And for putting the screws, if you want to, you can pre-drill the holes to be able to put the screws in. Um, these screws that I've got are self-tapping, so they, they, should, they shouldn't need pre-drilled holes. But I'll see how they go. If I find they need pre-drilled holes, then I'll obviously pre-drill the holes. Um, and of course, appropriate size drill bits to, to drill those holes. Um... I think that's all the tools that we're going to use. Clamps and PVA glue. And an exterior grade PVA glue is what you'll need to be able to glue this together because obviously it's going to be outside. Um, I'm not talking about like sealing the, um, the hive. You can paint the hives if you want, but I'm going to be using a mixture of linseed and beeswax. But I'll, I'll do that in another video. Otherwise, this one is just going to go way, way too long um, it's probably going to be a pretty long one anyway so it's probably not a bad time now just to pause the video grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you like to drink and settle on down because yes well this one could go for a little while all right we'll get on with the first thing we need to do is make or put together the follower boards with a um with one of the top bars and that basically provides us with a little bit of a jig to start putting the sides and the ends together so we'll get on with doing that now all right so earlier i talked about some differences i needed to make in the measurements now the biggest one was with the follower board now in the plans that i've got the follower boards were 15 inches across the top and five inches across the bottom now i don't all my tools are in metric so and they didn't give them a metric conversion so what i did just used my friend google um, 15 inches is 38.1 centimetres and 5 inches is 12.7 inches. To make it easy, I just rounded it. 38.1 became 38, 12.7 became 13 centimetres. So that's all I've done. Um, and you've got the two follower boards. There we go. All 13 centimetres across the bottom. 38 centimeters across the top. Now what we've got to do is attach one of the top bars to the follower boards. And what these follower boards do is they they define the edge of the hive space within the top bar hive. So the top bar hive is, is able to be expanded and contracted depending upon the size of the hive and that sort of thing. Um, so we've got to put this top bar on there. Now what I've done <clears throat> to get the 38 to find to be able to put this in the middle because you want it in the middle you don't want it to be uneven because you want it to be able to sit on the hive um, I've found the middle mark here and with 38 half of 38 is 19 so I've just measured 19 centimeters out either side which basically ends up being about two and a half centimeters or an inch from the from the outside in so now what I've got to do is when I screw this on and I've like pre-screwed some holes so it makes it easier to, to screw on. All I've got to do is just line up. Look at my messy mistakes there. Everyone makes mistakes on their things. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so all I've got to do is line up the two outside marks that I made with the edge of the follower board. And you want this reasonably in the middle. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly in the middle. Um, as long as it's close to it, the the bees aren't really going to matter about it because all it is is just defining an edge. So you basically want that lining up with those marks somewhere near the middle of that top bar. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll get, I'll fix this top bar, fix this top bar to the um, floor board. Alright, now I've just clamped the floor board into this little work table here. Now, what I need to do is to 
put a bead of glue across the top here, which just sort of helps fix it down, because we're going to screw it on, but screws by themselves, I don't think they are the perfect thing. We'll put plenty of glue on to make a good seal, and using our little edges, we'll place them on there, and try and just try and get it reasonably in the middle. Make sure my marks are there. That's right. Oops. That one's right. Okay. Alright. So I've got some screws. And all we do now is using the benefit of those pre drilled holes. Drill them down. Now, on the um, the screws that I've got, the screws that I've got to do most of them, they haven't got a, they've got a, an, um, a head that sticks proud of the wood. Now, I'm not too worried about that for most of them, but for the top bars, I'm using screws that will counter sink, and that's because you're going to use them as a jig. And if you use these screws in the top bar, it'll cause in the follower board, it'll cause the follower board to rock when you're trying to put the sides and the ends together. So to avoid that, on the follower boards, it's important that you screw the top bar to the follower board with a countersunk screw so that it sits nice and flat when you need to use it as a bit of a jig later on. But um, we'll get these follower boards together first and then we'll show you how you need to use them as a jig. So here we go. So we've got one full board. All I need to do is I'll just clean up those bits of glue there and then I'll get the other get the other follow board together and I'll show you how to put the sides and the ends together. Alright now we're ready to put the body of the hive together. Now what we've got to do is we've just got to make sure that the two follower boards here are parallel to each other. Now we just basically just use the, the set square like a one end along one and then as long as the end here is reasonably square then you can be pretty sure you can always check that by moving it out and putting it along the other end along the other end and you can see that it was just a little touch out. Okay, so we've got it there now. We'll just double check that they're parallel. Flip it over again. And we slip it in there. So now the two follower boards should be parallel. Now, what I've made up, I've made up these two jigs. Now, the bottom part needs to be the same length as your top bars okay so that's really the only bit that's important how wide they are how high these bits are doesn't really matter um, the two measurements that are important is that they're the same thickness as your top bars okay and they're the same length as your top bar so the thickness here has to be the same as the thickness of your top bar and the length of your top bar needs to be the same as well with these jigs and basically what they're going to do is they're going to be holding the side of the hive into place to keep it in, in place while you're screwing the ends onto the, the, um, the hive. So I'll get them all in place, give you a look at what it looks like and then we'll get those sides on. Alright now we've basically got the, the shape of the beehive coming together so at the moment, as we're putting the beehive together, it's actually upside down. So this is this is the bottom of the beehive, and there'll be mesh on the bottom um, in time. Um, what I've done is I've just placed where the um, where the end board needs to go on the end of the side of the bee, of the beehive, and marked where the edges 
of the sideboards are. Okay, on each side. And then what I've done is I've, I've measured them in just using a little ruler. So I've measured in how far, measured how far in the board goes at the bottom edge and then just transferred that measurement to the outside and then measured in the thickness of how thick the board is and drawn some lines. So I know that inside those lines that is where the screws need to go to screw the end board, this board here, on to the side boards, these boards here. Okay, so basically once those end boards are on, screwed onto the side boards, that's the beehive, pretty much the body of it, pretty much put together. Now of course I have to put some glue on the ends of these side boards here, just to fix them nice and strongly to the ends. And the reason that the ends are square and not the trapezoidal shape that the beehive takes is because when you screw the legs on, the legs basically go on like that. So you're going to have one board, one hole, or one bolt inside the beehive and one bolt's going to be outside the beehive. So you need these, this end little triangle bit on the, um, on the end of the beehive here so you can put both bolts on so you can fix it nice and secure. So that's why you maintain a, a, or a rectangular end on the beehive rather than cutting it into this trapezoidal shape. Okay, so I'll get this end screwed onto the sides and then I'll show you how I, how I go about doing that just so you can see it. Um, and one little disclaimer I'll put in here now, um, any people who are qualified cabinet makers or builders, carpenters, those sorts of things may have noticed that I'm not the world's greatest carpenter, um, I'm not a qualified carpenter or anything like that so if I'm doing anything wrong I'm happy to accept constructive criticism but just keep in mind that um, I'm just a backyard bloke just doing stuff as best I can. Um, yeah, if I can do stuff better, I'm happy to hear helpful hints. But um, yeah, just keep it in mind, be nice, okay? I'll get this end on. So I've got one end in, at the moment, the top, but what will be the bottom of that side bit. And now I'll get a screw in this side. That'll help hold the two of them together. So that's the side fix in, I just might try and get that a little tighter fixed. That's better. Now we'll get some screws. Get some screws into the bottom of this end board here.
Okay, so we've got a screw in there, and it went through nicely, didn't split it at all. And we'll get another screw in the, and here. And what we want to make sure of is that this all remains reasonably snug together so that the, um, the side boards are snug up against the um, follower boards. Okay, and we'll get this one in. Do now is just get a screw in the middle of each sideboard and then this end is fixed oh, fixed together all right so that's it all screwed together and that middle one's gone a little bit astray there, I can fix that up. Um, but yeah, that's basically the ends together. I'll be doing the same thing at the other end. So I'll get the other end on and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, now the next step is not so much fixing the legs, but organizing things for where the legs are going to go to. Now, what I've done here, um, I've measured, well, this is actually up 70 mil but I'm going to bring it down to 50 mil, which will just make a two centimeter difference, which is just under an inch. So that'll just give the roof a little bit more clearance when I, when I do put the roof on, because the legs actually support the roof. So they, they keep it a little bit off the top of the, the um, top bars. So I'm gonna bring it down to 50 and I'll maintain this angle. <clears throat> Excuse me, so what I've basically done is I just, um, made up an arbitrary angle, got my ruler, um, found the middle, found an angle where I could get the legs between these two screws and that, that looked like a good angle for the legs. Okay, so found that angle on the line and just with the ruler just went, yep, good angle, draw it. Then copied that angle using the sliding bevel. Now that's the angle that I'm going to use. It's actually slipped a bit, but I can always find that again. So what I will need to do is just bring this line down to 50 mil, find my middle mark again, which is here, and then just transfer this down to there. No problem at all. Done the same thing on the other end. And then what I've done is Got the legs, and I've actually numbered them one, two, three, four on the other side, so I know exactly which leg goes where. This is leg number two. You might not be able to see that too, but I know, just pretending this is a 50 mil, that is where the leg's going to go. And what I've done is I clamped the two legs together. I'll show you that. So they were clamped together, clamped together so that they were even. They're actually like that when I clamped them together, they were square. And what I did was, I drew the angle on the legs and then measured in um, five centimeters from the edge. And then, um, I forget what that was exactly. Remind myself. So, so roughly five centimetres and 20 centimetres from the edge there, close to the middle. And I've done the same with the other set of legs as well. So they will have holes in the same spots and the angle will be the same. So it'll just make them look fairly even. And then what I will do when it comes time to fix the legs to the hive, because I won't fix them just yet. We've got a few, few more things that need to be done first. 
Um, if you fix the legs now, it just becomes a little bit unwieldy and we still have a few things that need to be done to the hive. So what I'll do is I can get the legs, get them placed on the angle using the lines that I've drawn on there, clamp the leg in place, drill the holes for the bolts to go through, so it should go that way, drill the holes for the bolts to go through, bolt the leg on, remove the clamps, and the leg will be in place. Okay, so that'll make it pretty easy. Um, yeah, that's about it. So that's that's what I'm going to do to fix the legs. But like I said, it's everything's prepared. The holes are in, or the holes of the holes will be in place um, once I'm ready to put the legs on. But I've got it all ready now. While I've got this upside down, and I can play around with things. So. The next thing we need to do now is to put this mesh, this mesh, which is basically um, some gutter guard that I got, it was pretty cheap, but I'm going to have to cut it down and it will go, it will be fixed into this space here. Okay, so basically what that is, it's stopping anything from being able to get in the bottom, but having the bottom open for ventilation. And if you're in a very cold climate, they get snow and that sort of thing. Um, and it, this is in the plans that I've, I've got down in the information panel. Um, you can have a winter board on the bottom to keep things cool. But in my climate here, I'm not going to need a winter board. So I'm not going to worry about um, going to the whole trouble of fixing something to the hive that I don't need. So anyway, um, we've got the legs organised. They'll be fitted a little bit later on down the track. Now it's time to fix this mesh, but the first thing I need to do, I just need to get it cut to the width that it needs to be. So I'll do that, and then I'll come back and show you how I'm fixing the mesh. All right, so we're ready to put the wire on now. Now you might notice that I'm changing to a different shirt, and I don't change my clothes several times a day. Um, it's actually, it was when I finished putting the main part of the hive together, it was actually, oh, getting a little bit late in the evening so I decided to stop and um, not annoy the neighbours anymore so it's a couple of days later actually because yesterday was absolutely pouring with rain and it was not much fun to work out here on the back deck and so here we are we're ready to put the wire on now what I've done I've given it a bit of a start and I've just screwed in one end now I've, I've just trimmed this wire I've trimmed it to length and just took the little um, corrugation bits off there that go into the corrugated um, metal on the roof if you use it as a gutter guard so obviously whatever mesh you use whether it's plastic mesh or metal mesh you'll need to trim it to size it goes without saying really so what I've done I've just fixed it to the end here and you can see if you look up to the end it seems to probably because of my workmanship seems to want to go off to the right there so even if it didn't, when you are fixing any of these things, you're best to start at one end and just work your way up bit by bit to the other end just to make sure you get things nice and straight. If I screw this on here and then go and do the same thing at the end and then try and put all the screws in between, I could find myself in all sorts of mess. So, okay, I'll, I'll work up here. I'll just keep going bit by bit up either side and get this mesh on nice and straight and secure. So let's get that done. Alright, so there you go. That's the mesh screwed onto the bottom. So we'll have a look here. So you can see the mesh there, like probably a little bit of overkill there on the ends. So um, it was a little bit difficult to even it up. Like I said, maybe that's my workmanship, the way I've got the angles done, but I'm not particularly worried about that. If the bees don't care, oh, I'm not particularly worried about it either. Anyway, there's two things I've got to do now. Like I spoke about before, I want to put an observation window in with the perspex. So I need to cut that out. And on the other side, I need to put some 
um, entrance holes for the bees. Now I'm going to have three in the middle and then one at each end. Um, <coughs> and the reason for that is, is spelled out in the, the plans that I've linked below. Um, basically, if you want to um, split the hive, then you need some holes at either end, so you've got two lots of holes. Um, you want holes in the middle so that you can just keep them in the middle at first until they get bigger, and then you want holes at the ends as well, just to give them those other entrances that they can use when they want to. Anyway, we'll um, get ready now to cut the observation window in the side, so when I'm ready to cut that, we'll come back and have a look. Right, so what I've done now is I've drawn where I want my window to go, and using my drill I've drilled a whole lot of little holes where I'm going to start doing my cut. Now I'm going to be using a power jigsaw. Now the holes don't make um, a cut for me to slide the saw in so I'm going to have to start that. And the way you do that is you start the saw and you put it in as an, as an angle and then you tilt the blade into the cut like that to start the cut and then you can move along and start making the cut. So I'll get this cut going and we'll cut this window out. Alright, so I've got the door for the little inspection window fixed up now, so I'll give you a look at that. So here we go, we've got the door here, stainless steel hinges, so hopefully they don't rust, uh, and they're full dipped zinc um, um, locks here. So these simply open up, and there we go, got an inspection window, so we can see inside the beehive. Now, like, it's not a massive inspection window. It's not meant to be able to do a full inspection. If you're going to inspect your bees properly, you've got to pull the comb out. But this is just to give you an idea if you just want to have a look to see if the bees are okay, then you can open that up and have a little look. So that's the inspection window. <clears throat> now we've got to get on with the holes. So I'll just turn the hive over and you can sort of see now, I'll just give you a quick look at how the hive takes place. Now, I'll get one of the follower boards and we'll just set it here in the hive. Now, I have found that once I've put the wire in, I'm just going to have to trim that follower board down a bit. But you can see there, once I trim it down a bit, it'll just fit in just fine. The bar will sit on the top. I think I'll need to take about half a centimetre off or something like that. Maybe in the end it will fit a bit better. There you go. So you can see in the end, because it's been pulled away by the end, the follower board just sits on top. And normally you would start, the perspex is going to automatically stop it there anyway. So that's going to, you can see where the perspex ends from here to there. That's how big the hive is going to be anyway, so I'm not going to really be able to make it any smaller than that. Um, but that's right, if, if I feel I need to, um, I can always just cut this off. I just didn't bother doing any more cuts than what I needed to on the perspex. So if I need to, I can take this perspex off and just cut a little bit off there, and that'll allow a couple of inches on either side to be able to bring the um, the floor boards in a bit more. Um, some people might say, and I'll say it now before people question it anyway, uh, I could have just recessed this in and that wouldn't be such a problem. Well, one, I don't have a router, and two, I'm just really trying to keep this as simple as I can. Um, and yeah, so I decided not to worry about recessing it in. Anyway, we'll get on with making the entrance holes. All right, now I'm ready to get the, um, the holes for the entrance drilled. Now what I've done is I've marked a rough spot here where the middle of the hive is, so the middle from end to end, and just about 
two inches up from the bottom. So that should be fine for an entrance for the bees. Now, what I'm going to do, no, this is on a slope, but I'm going to try and drill it um, on an angle into the bore. Now, I'll see how I go. I haven't really tried to use a hole saw at an angle before, but um, we'll see how this goes. Bring it closer so I can get a better start. Righto, now, now I've found out that with this width of board here on that angle, I'm not quite going to get it. I've, I've broken through at the top, but I haven't broken through at the bottom. So I'm hoping, I'll see, I'm hoping I've got enough room on the other side just to drill back through and just to finish off that little hole. So let's see how we go. Actually, let's have a look. We might just be able to... Snap that little bit off because it's only just a tiny little bit. Mm, just not sure. I don't think we're going to quite get the angle through there. No, that's not going to work. So, I'll keep this one at the flat angle that it's at. Should be able to just trim that off. I had a knife here. Right, yeah. So there we go. We've got that one hole cleaned out. Um, so, I might just, actually no, I'll drill the rest straight through. I'll keep them going straight through the way I wanted to. And um, I'll just have to finish them off with a little knife. So, we'll come back when we've got them all finished. And then, once all those holes are done, it's time to get started on making the roof. Actually, not quite, getting ahead of myself. Once we've got all these holes in, it's time to get, time to get on to fixing the legs onto the hive and then we'll get started on the roof. All right, so now I'm ready to put the legs on. So what I'm going to do, I've, like I said before, I've transferred where they're going to go to from, they were, I did have it 70 mil up from the bottom of the hive and I've transferred it down to 50 mil. So the line that they, that the top of, or yeah, the top of the legs sit on, plus the angled line that they follow, I've just transferred all that down. So what I'm going to do is place both the legs there at the same time, get it on there and then I'll be putting a clamp if I can untangle it from everything else. And placing the clamp so that it does not interfere with the drilling of the holes try and keep everything in place at the same time. Okay.
Right, yeah, so there's one in place, and now I'll get the second one in place. I'll grab the clamp to do that as well. Okay, so they're held nice and firmly in place. Now I just need to drill the holes for the bolts to go through the, the body of the hive. Let's see how this goes with these clamps being so close. So I might do the bottom ones first. Then we can put those bolts in place. It really helps if you've got the drill going in the correct direction. Alright, now I need to get those bolts. Here's the washers and over here are the bolts. Now, we'll be back in a second, just got to get a screwdriver and a spanner. Alright, couldn't find the spanner but I mean with these little square nuts um, a pair of pliers should do just fine so what we've got to do is get this bolt through the hole and it, it will be a bit tight so it's probably going to take a little bit of work for me to get through here I might actually have to screw it through with a screwdriver but that's fine it'll make it fixed nice and firmly I have an even better idea if I can find it. I'll use my cordless drill to drive it through. There we go, so the bolt's through. I did tell you before about washers. I forgot the washer, so <laughs> that's what happens when you're trying to think ahead to a million other things that you're trying to do. So, I have washers, I'll reverse the drill and take that bolt out. I did say I'm not a cabinet maker. There you go, it's the truth. Rightio, now I'll put the washer on the bolt and it should almost push through. Not quite. Rightio, now that's true, we'll get a washer on, get the nut on. With that bolt being pretty tight, with this one, we won't even need the screwdriver to tighten it right up. I guess I will. Yeah, that's pretty tight now. Okay, so I mean it's as easy as that, just clamp them down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bolt through the other bottom hole and then I'll put the bolt through the two top holes as well. That means that I can then take the clamp off. Um, actually I've got to drill those holes first. 
once I've got these two tight, I can take the clamp off and it should still hold pretty still. And um, then I can drill the holes, put the two top bolts through and that's two legs joined onto the hive and then I can flip it over and do the legs on the other end. So I'll do that and um, yeah, then we'll have legs on. All right, so there you go. That's the first two legs um, fixed onto the top bar hive. Now I've just got to do the two legs on the other side and we'll be all done for legs. Okay, I'll get that done and then we'll start work on the roof of the beehive. All right, now that we've got the legs on, I'm ready to do the roof. So what I've done is I've pre-cut the pieces. You can see here I've got the end pieces pre-cut with the gable shape on them. Okay, and these bits here. Now these bits, the beehive, got to remember these measurements now, the beehive is 1140 millimeters long. These bits of wood are 18 millimeters wide, which, let me go and get my little number board and I'll refresh my memory. All right, which added up to 1,176. I'll bring that out to 1,080, just to allow a bit of a gap for expansion and shrinkage and all that sort of stuff. Ooh, stay in focus. Okay, now that's for the sides. For the end ones, the end of the hive is 450 millimeters. Um, so I've made this 455 millimeters, which will leave two and a half millimeters each end for a bit of shrinkage and expansion. So we should have some nice clearance there, I hope, otherwise I'll have to do it all again. And um, yeah, so I'll put these, screw these together. So it's just, again, it's just gluing and screwing. And that's one of the great things about these plans is it's simple carpentry. It's just straight butted joints, just screwed together. No dovetails or dowels or who's them or what's it and all these fancy carpentry things that people find hard to do if they haven't had a lot of practice so it's just really simple stuff so i'm going to put this together now and we'll look at fitting the sheet on here and then getting the gable on and finishing the roof off and that'll be the hive done all right so of course with each with each bit that we we attach we have to glue each each end so i'll put the glue on here on get the glue in there All right, maybe less than perfect carpentry. It doesn't quite, the bolts or the screws, sorry, bolts, screws, the screws sort of moved it, but I'm not gonna worry about it. As long as this lid sits on there reasonably neatly, I think the bees will be happy. Anyway, I'll get the rest of the corners done and then we'll come back and look at putting a bit of ply across the top here and then the gable on the end. Okay, I'll see you then. All right, so now you can see here that we've got the frame together. <coughs> I've actually, by pulling it together, I've actually decided I'm not going to worry about putting the three mil ply on here. I don't think that in my climate here I'm going to need the sort of insulation that it would offer. I'm just going to put the um, the panels that I'm going to put on top of here and have the gabled roof with the open area. I think that the um, the open space up here will be more beneficial in terms in in terms of allowing for cooling in the warm summers that we have here, then the benefit they, that they get from having the plywood here, keeping things warm in the winter. So um, getting too hot can be as bad as getting too cold, obviously. Um, so 
what we're going to do is put the two sheets on top. Now, basically the way they're going to fit is each sheet will come up to the top of the gable and butt up against each other. So I'll just place them on there. So there, now they'll butt up against each other like that. Now I haven't cut these on an angle or anything so they butt right up against each other and form a nice little join. But what I'm going to do is get a strip of metal that's going to cover this join in the middle. But I'm not going to fix it right now. I'm going to wait until I seal this. Um, it's just so that I can get the, the beeswax and linseed oil mixture that I'm going to use to seal it um, right up to the top of these panels and dribble some just inside the um, ends here as well so I seal them nicely. Um, yeah, I just feel it would be better if, if these were completely sealed with beeswax before I fix the metal strips. So, um, like I said, I'll, I'll be sealing them with the beeswax in, a, in another video. Um, so if you watch that video, you'll see how I fix the, the metal strip to the top of the um, of the roof here. So I'll fix these on. Now the only thing is I do have them overlapping the edge of the roof a little bit. Um, so I just need to make sure that I've got an even amount either side of the ends here. Just, I mean, it's not going to make a big difference to the roof. It just looks nice if you have things nice and even. I don't want an inch hanging over this side and half an inch hanging over the other side. Um, I want a nice even bit on either side. So I'll get these screwed in and then we can have a look at the, the finished product. So I'll get onto that and then we're all done. Now with, um, with making sure these are even, I'm not gonna be very scientific with it. I'm just gonna feel that they're even. Um, that's gonna be close enough to me actually I might I might be a little bit more scientific than that I'll get my ruler and measure it if I can find it <clears throat> there we go so move this one out of the way actually I'll put glue down because once I get it in place I don't want to have to take it off and put glue on again now I'm not going to put glue along this edge here because it doesn't fit flush with this edge. So I'm only going to put glue on the gable part. But even, even though it's not screwed down along here, uh, sorry, even though it has not glue along here, I am going to be putting screws along this edge here. So it will be screwed down along the, um, the bottom edge just to keep everything nice and strong. Okay, so we just place it on the gable so it's reasonably even by feel. Get right up on there. Okay, I'll measure this. So that's about 11 millimetres, 11, 12 millimetres. On this side is 10, so we'll just push it up and give it a touch. Get back just a touch. Oh yeah, I reckon that'll be pretty good. Alright, now I will put the screws in here, have I? No, there they are. Now, what I'm going to do first, just to get these fixed in place, I'm just going to put one screw at the top in each end. So that'll that'll mean it won't move for the rest of it. So once I've got one here and one up the end here then I don't have to worry about holding it anymore. I can just put all the rest of the screws in and fix this sheet, and then I'll get onto this one.
yeah, so we've got a thunderstorm tonight, so hopefully I don't get struck by thunder or well, lightning. So, alright, we've got those screws in. I'm happy with the way they're in place. Now, I'm just going to put the rest of the screws in, then we'll get this one fixed, and we're all done. That's the last screw in the roof here that both the roof panels are on. Now, for the moment of truth. I've got to get this onto the beehive. So, let's just spin you around so you can see the beehive. There you go, you can see the beehive there. I will grab this and let's see how it fits. How good is that? I'm very happy with that. So we've got the lid on. Our little door here opens up. Got our holes on the other side for the bees to come in and out of. Everything's looking pretty good. Now, we've got our floor boards. We can get them put in there. The other thing is with our top bars. Now, I won't make these for you, but what I've got to do is I've got to cut these bits of dowel to size. Okay, so these bits of dowel, they're just, I'll show you. You can see they're just semicircle dowel. Okay, so I've got to cut them to size so that you're in about an inch or so from each end of the top bar okay and then hammer them glue and hammer glue and nail them to the middle of each top bar now a little tip with these when you put these dowel on and I'll just bring you back down to the table again okay when you're nailing these dowel on, you're going to be using these tiny little nails. If I can find my pliers, now trying to hold these and hammer them in, you'll spend more time belting the hell out of your fingers than you will actually hammering these things in. So, a little trick. With little tiny nails, hold them with a pair of pliers. And it doesn't even have to be tight, it just has to hold them still. I actually haven't got my hammer with me. I haven't even got anything like that. I can pretend with this. This will be easy enough. So, just pretend this is a hammer. I haven't got my hammer with me. I could be bothered getting it now. It's late and I want to go to bed. Anyway, so you hold it with the pliers and you just oops, gonna, and if I had a hammer at this stage it's gone through with a hammer you'd be able to drive that nail home and your fingers are safe so that's a little tip with these tiny little weeny nails when you go to hammer them in hold them with a pair of pliers save yourself a whole lot of pain on your fingers anyway like I said, it's um, it's late at night. I think I've probably annoyed the neighbours enough with all the noise. Anyway, so that's it. That's making a top bar beehive. And um, yeah, I I think you'd have to say it's not that hard. Like I said, check the link down below. There'll there'll be a link to the plans that I used. And I mean, they're they're good plans. They show you how to make it. But I just thought having a video, seeing someone who's got it, and especially like like I said, I'm not a carpenter. I'm just a bloke in the backyard making a beehive um, and with pretty basic tools really. I haven't got any special trade tools or anything like that. All my tools are standard stuff you can buy in any hardware shop. So um, 
yeah, if I can make it, I reckon you can make it as well. So, if you ever thought of making a beehive, something like that, um, yeah, why not give it a go? Anyway, that's it for now, and until next time, happy productive gardening, and now, happy productive beekeeping. See ya.